But we, we here, here at Croak and Crow, at Croak and Crow. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am June Cleaver. June Cleaver. And this here is Frank, who's looking strikingly normal today. That's normal. Just normal. There's nothing. Maybe you're just trying to blend in. Blend in on this. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. You don't have to get all defensive for Frank. He can speak for himself. You know, um, some people... Don't like to be flashy. Some people don't like to be flashy. I'm not. Well, he one does. Of them. So I guess that's what you meant. Yeah. But I mean, you can. He doesn't want to be labeled. He doesn't want to be in a box. Yeah. He doesn't want to be. Oh, I'm flashy, Frank. Right. He wants to be. I'm just. I'm just Frank. <laughs> well, it is May. We're doing our May podcasts. May the podcast be great. First week of first May. First week of May. And the first Thursday of May, yes. which is always, I, I want to say international, but. It's prayer day. Prayer day. Is oh, so that's not... Today's May 6th? Yeah, today's May 6th. But that's not International Prayer Day. It's no. the first Thursday of May. Of May, yeah. Huh. Well, it is International Prayer Day. The first Thursday of May. If you haven't already said a prayer, go ahead and say one. Or, where, you know what today is? Walk through, through Thursday. Thursday. Roll the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. Yes, so it is walk through Thursday. So if you haven't already said a prayer, don't worry. We've got you covered over at Croak and Crow. We are going to walk through a prayer together on this International Prayer Day. That's pretty cool. It lands on a Thursday. Yeah. What would we do if it landed on a Friday? We'd have to have fun with it. We'd have to have fun with it. Do you have a prayer that you say? Like, you want me to say one? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. Do you not have one ready? For um, myself? Well, for... <laughs> oh, you meant for Walk Through Thursday. I just meant since it's prayer day. Prayer day. Um, How about the Our Father? Um, How how about that one that, that the ki- all the kids used to get told, but you don't really tell them anymore because it's a little dark? The, uh, now I lay me down <laughs> to sleep and pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if, or mm-hmm. shall, if I die before I wake... I pray the Lord my soul to take. I always liked it. I thought it was like cool. It, was it is. It's silly to think that it's not. But it's kind of frightening to kids. <laughs> if I die before. Yeah, I know. I because I, I didn't teach my kids that. I would tell them to say, um, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Guide me safely through the night. Wake me with your morning light. But if you're not awoken and you please, die. Please clean up what's <laughs> going on here. <laughs> I say, um, I say prayer before meals. Oh yeah, prayer before meals. Mm-hmm. It's the bless, bless us, uh, the bless this, O oh Lord. Bless us, bless okay. us, bless us, O oh Lord. I say it so quick. I, I if I try to break down the words, I won't be able to. Yeah. Bless us, O oh Lord. Um. Yeah, and, and, I, and we grew up saying it as a family at the table. Bless us, O oh Lord, in these thy gifts, which we're about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's the old English that you like. King James. Thy and thy. thou. Um, now, I say it, but we don't eat meals as a family any longer. No. So, I say it to myself. Do you? Um, it's one that I forget a lot. Really? Yeah. I literally, I'll go to Wawa and get a snack and I say, as I'll eat it, I'll say, um, bless me, bless me. It's, you know, I always play with pronouns. You're, you're big, big pronoun. <laughs> I am. You're big into pronouns. Um. For these, I guess, that I am receiving from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And if I forgot to pray, I'll say it past tense. Mm. So I'll say um, that I received. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's probably something I should work on more. But It's such a short one. It's so easy. And it just makes the food taste better. Yeah, no, I bet it does. But um, for me, it's like I'm always usually just as soon as I get to my food, I, I lose sight of everything. Now, one thing I don't lose sight of, and I always notice it at people because with when i'm at, out to eat with people is when people start eating before everyone's gotten their food oh yeah i noticed that pretty quickly because you know why i think i noticed it so much because i'm not eating because oh. i like i don't know i thought i think it's like a manners thing yeah but um i'll see someone and they're just like 
not not even being rude not like oh, i'm not gonna wait for you guys just i guess that's not something that they learned right and so then i'm like am i being a little judgy yeah is it only because i'm usually my tum- tummy's a rumbling mm-hmm. so is there a bit of envy that i'm like must be nice to not have morals <laughs> <laughs> No. Um, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, the um have you ever seen someone pray in a restaurant? I've seen people pray in um fast food restaurant. Really? Yeah. That's not I mean I've seen Muslims. No, I'm th- I've seen people I yeah. saw a guy like yourself, a young guy. That's good. Yeah. He didn't say it out loud. I saw him bless himself to take a moment. Yeah. And then um No, that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, f- I feel like Muslims, they're good on prayer. Oh yeah. There, that, that that's like uh, 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 five times a day. And then yeah. I knew a kid. I was on the soccer team with them. He was from the Ivory Coast, mm-hmm. and um, he would always be going to the bathroom just to pray because it was like part of the five times a day. And one time I was in the stalls and I saw like his feet. <laughs> I'm not peeking under stalls or anything, but and no, um, but they should have provided him a place i think it was more for him like okay. i'm sure they would have said yeah absolutely do it anywhere yeah. but when you have to pray so much and you you just want it to be a personal thing i think you're looking for a, yeah. like you, you, I, I can imagine if i practiced islam i would probably do the same thing just like once like, not an embarrassment mm-hmm. to say oh i'm gonna go to this one yeah it's for me right I'm, I'm not doing yeah i think i thought it was pretty cool and i and i do think they have to wash before so you're right there yeah sink boom boom wash beep bop boop yeah pray away so yes a day of prayer walk through thursday do we have a prayer yeah we have a prayer. <laughs> um the prayer is here. or bible verse i should say bible all oh, right bible verse you're right now what's the like what deems a prayer a prayer and like because we talked about, you know, Bible verses. It's like, oh, I, every night I pray and I say this verse. So when when's the crossover? Is every Bible verse a prayer? I guess every Bible verse could be a prayer, but not every prayer has to be a Bible verse. True. Mm, right. I like that. Right. Yeah. Um, saying, we said that before, like just reading the Bible is like you're praying because you're, you're yeah. saying the word of God. But I think just. If you ask anybody on the street what a prayer is, they're going to say a conversation with God. Okay. Like a phone call. Because it's like, dear God. It's always yeah. um, starts like that. And then you're either saying a prayer of petition, which is you're asking for something, or a prayer of thanksgiving, where you're being appreciative of something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like a conversation. A um, combo. But some people find it really hard to pray. And that's where the Bible verses come in. Yeah. In a pinch. Yeah. But I also think it's important to remember the distinction because a lot of people think prayer is Bible verses and prayer while well, prayer can be Bible because a lot right. of people get, we talked about getting intimidated by, I don't know, Bible verses. And it's like, hey, simple conversation. Yeah. Dear God, thank you for everything. By the way, I got a math test coming up. If you could help me out on that, mm-hmm. give me the strength and the wisdom, then boom, you're done. It doesn't need to, like, if you put too much weight on, I need like it's a business email. Like I, know. I need to format this correctly. It's like no, you don't. It, it's a casual. Yeah, conversation. that's really that's really true and important because people really do get intimidated. Yeah, and they they look. You're always looking around for somebody to bless the water and bless the oil and yeah. to say the prayer. Um, and and we're used to that. Uh, you see it. They have um someone come in to say a prayer for the inauguration or you yeah know, um. All these kind of things, sports and stuff like that. But anybody can do it. Yeah. Norm- Normalize casual prayer. That's what I say. It's true. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, oh, like I should pray more. And it's like in their mind, they're like, it's, it's as if you're saying I should read the Bible more. It's like it's you, you, in the meantime of you saying I should pray more, you could do a three second prayer. Yeah. Dear God, thank you for everything. Boom, right. you're done. You just prayed. Like uh, it's that simple. And then if you want to work from that, right. learn some Bible verses to throw in there jazz it up sprinkle it up right sprinkle it on i don't know then do that but it you just starts... think you could say a prayer that says i don't know how to pray yeah dear lord <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, help me pray more and then amen boom that's it you know like uh when you're learning a paragraph it's like mm-hmm. it needs to like, be at least be three sentences yeah doesn't matter with prayer it can be a run-on fragment sentence yeah and it's just about getting that conversation started 
make it a habit to pray and it's like going to the gym i know everything's like going to the gym to me but i need to go to the gym more i need to go to the gym more people always say that or like i need to start going to the gym Uh it's a it's a big commitment right and i would say to you just walk up up and down the steps Mm -hmm. you just worked out right do do two push-ups right walk around the block you're working out like if you put such a and then you know what if you walk around the block every every day and then you're like wow then now this is becoming easy all you're still working out every day now you're going to push more Mm -hmm. now oh well maybe i might get a membership hop on the elliptical do some weight work but don't if you start with the only people i know that work out are fitness gurus who are bench pressing 400 pounds you, I, I i would be right there with you saying yeah one day one day right but one day is today on national prayer day yeah and also you know there's quite a few bible verses where the person is complaining crying yeah um confused yeah so i know i just said that prayers would be like praying for something or praying because you got something but it could also just be you know why is this happening to me and i'm yeah. such i'm in such a dark place and you know you can complain to god in your prayer and you can yeah no i mean like treat it like a diary you know yeah. like and the, the thing that's nice about prayer is i always say this I, I always say i always say this do i always say it? i don't know but there is I, I see a lot of things with the religion that have both earthly benefits and also spiritual benefits. So even if you're not that religious of a person, and I said it with, oh, this is what I said it with, uh, with penance. What's the other word for penance? Con- Con- uh, confession. Confession, yeah. Where I was like, you're getting spirit. It's, it's a spiritual um, thing. If you know, you're being like, ab- ab- I'm trying to think of all these <laughs> words. I don't know. Absolved. Absolved of your sins. But also you're sort of, speaking to another person it's like a therapy session in a way prayer the same thing like if you treat it like your diary and you're you're walking through it you're not even verbally but mentally going through the things that you are thinking instead of just getting this anxiety and like why am i feeling this if all the time you're sort of like externally cataloging everything like right um oh i i felt this today blah 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 treat it like a diary and then you're really running through things in your mind and it's sort of a it can help with that right and people don't think about praying until someone says, can you pray for me? Or if you think someone needs prayers, but pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Put yourself first and put everyone else close second. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like, don't don't be selfish, but at the same time, be a little selfish. I always talk about sharpening the axe. Now, what that means is if you want to cut down a tree, first you got to sharpen the axe. Mm-hmm. If you want to help other people, first you, you need to make sure that you're 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 doing well for yourself right. worry worry about if you're a dull axe that tree ain't coming down someone's like cut down that tree and you're like wait a second i'm yeah. holding a rusty metal blunt object yes you can't pour from an empty cup can't pour from an empty cup yeah all right let's get let's get to a bible verse all right let's do old testament i feel like we always do new testament straight old testament because you know <laughs> We're inclusive. Every, True. Every, how many religions look at the Old Testament? True. At least three of them. And this is a good. This is a good um, Bible verse. <clears throat> it's two verses. It's Isaiah chapter six, verses nine and ten. Um, it's a good one for what we just said. Should we should we talk about Old Testament or New Testament? Um, because this um, verse that I just told you about is one of the, um, you know, Jesus came and fulfilled the scriptures. Yes. This is one of the prophecies. This is one of the prophecies. This is one of the, Jesus mentions it. Yeah. Uh, he, he refers back to it. And it, um, all of them do. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all mention, um, all talk about it. So in a new way. Or, okay. You know, in a, in a comeback <laughs> Come back this way. So, so it's kind of like both. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to read it? Because I don't know what I'm looking at. Sure. He said, go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the heart of this people calloused. Make their ears dull and close their eyes. 
Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. What? I'm confused. Why is he making the people's hearts calloused? Right. So it's it's a little um, confusing. I didn't know how hard we wanted to make it. <laughs> but I just thought it was interesting because... Um, Okay, it's it's a question actually. People want to know, and it's highly debated, as you can imagine. It's Old Testament, and it's so many people say very, very specific things about Israel. Yeah, and as you know, we don't do that. So, as you can, it's going to be let those who can see here and let yeah let those who can see here, let those who can see see and let those who can hear hear. That's what Jesus is going to say. In the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John are all going to bring that up. Okay, so this is in the Old Testament. And if you were to ask a scholar, they would say it has to do with um, Israel. Yeah. And that who deserves what. And these people don't even know what's going on. And, you know, but that is this the morsel. This is the seed. This is the piece that will be fulfilled when Jesus comes. And when Jesus comes, he starts repeating it in parables. When he repeats it, he's talking about the people who are rejecting him. Okay. Okay. So in this, in Isaiah, it's supposedly about um, is Israel rejecting God. This is supposed to be about people rejecting Jesus. But I find for the purpose of people on earth in 2021. Yeah. It's no longer going to be a political or geographical problem. Yeah. So what was, why did these words, why did these words survive? Why is this part of today's living word? Okay. I'm hearing what you're saying. Okay. Be ever hearing, but never understanding. So go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding. Well, I think in the Old Testament, um... He's accusing them of it. He said, go and tell his people. I know, but I still think it's accusatory. Like, like you would accuse somebody like, <clears throat> okay. You, you know, when you tell someone like, yes, I know you're listening, but you're not hearing me. Okay. No, I'm hearing what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, he's got a little bit of a, a tone, if you will. A lot. Because at the end of it. That's what confuses me. Okay. And then it says, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Right. And that's a good thing. Right. All, all those things are good things. Right. So it's like, it's sort of a, you know what? Go and tell the people. Keep on hearing, but never understand. Keep on seeing. Right. But, but never actually perceive what's happening. Right. Um, make their ears dull and close their, you know, close their eyes. Okay. If, if you don't want to, if you don't want to see, if you don't want to hear, if you don't understand with your right. heart. You don't want to be healed. That's how it ends. Right. A little, little bit of, a little bit snippy. That's what I think. And also, um, you know, saying this is this is happening. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. Not only is it happening now, which was you know in Isaiah. Yeah. But it's happening when the Messiah comes. Mm-hmm. You know, and same thing. You know, when you think of the New Testament, and same thing with Jesus. Everybody kept saying, you're blasphemous. Stop saying yeah. what you're saying. We yeah. don't believe you. You're a joke. He, too, was like, this is happening. Yeah. I'm fulfilling the scripture. Yeah. He refers back to Isaiah. So we know that's really important. And that's why, even though it's kind of a, it's not one of the fun, you know, verses no, I, I to, like to it, put on a poster. But yeah. it's obviously so important. It was said here. Then... Jesus said it. All four apostles reported on it. And, you know, it's one of my favorite things to keep saying. Let those who have ears hear. Yeah. Because in one way, it's giving you a tip. You know, like, even when Jesus spoke about the parables, they were like, why are you speaking in parables? And Jesus was, it was kind of like, it's pig Latin. Yeah. The people who need to hear it, yeah. you know. No, it's kind of like when someone really, like. You you know the answer for them or how to fix something and the person does not care. Right. And it's like, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> D- definitely don't you know, right. d- turn that th- to the right. Because um, if you do that, it might just actually work. 
Right. No, yeah, I like so back in the in the Old Testament, what Jesus came and and he talked a lot about was hypocrites. You know, that was a that was a big thing he was mm-hmm. against. It's what I'm against. I'm I'm against hypocrites. Right. And I'm gonna change. You know, if you change the word people, if you consider them like that, they were already doing this stuff. Change the word to hypocrites. Right. Go and tell the hypocrites. Yeah. Keep keep on hearing but never understand. Keep on seeing but never perceive. Right. Um. Otherwise, you might see with your eyes, or you might. I'm I'm gonna paraphrase it. Yeah. I'm gonna shorten it to to make it. All right. Go and tell the hypocrites. Keep on hearing, and don't understand. Keep on seeing, but don't perceive. Otherwise, you might see with your eyes, hear with your ears, understand with your hearts, and then you and then be healed. It's like. It's not saying, oh, go and shut the ears of everybody and shut the no. eyes. It's sort of like. Keep on doing it. Right. Keep, keep on doing it. If you if you if you want if that's what you're choosing if you're if you if you have ears if you don't have ears and you're not willing to hear right if you don't have eyes and you're not willing to see then you're not going to turn and be healed right right and it's sort of like this it's like well, what do you want me to do I'm Isaiah right um, or whoever said it make the heart of this people calloused um, is is what we talk about every day when. People go by the letter of the law mm. or what they what was written down and they're not they're not they're not learning it with their heart. Yeah. They're closing their heart off. Yeah. Because when we say, would Jesus do that? You yeah. know, like that's always the sticking point. Because in the first two things, it's not saying the people that don't want to know about it. It's not or no, we're talking about like. Um, you know, God and spirituality when we're talking about this, this overarching thing. But it's not saying tell the people to uh, still don't listen for the people that aren't listening right. or the people that don't want to see it. It's saying the people that are hearing, but they're not understanding. Yes. It's talking about the people that are seeing like, oh, I, I see this in the Bible. I hear, I, I, I know this, but you're not perceiving. Right. It's those people we're talking about. And that is, that, that's why I changed the word to hypocrites because right. those people that get into this gridlock that made Jesus so frustrated. Right. And also, um, I find that it's good advice for, you know, the the other thing you'll hear, don't throw pearls before swine. Like, even though you know that what you're saying is Christ-like and you know what you're saying is not a calloused heart, but it's a soft heart and, you you know, don't waste your time. Sorry to say, waste your time, but don't waste your time trying to hammer it into somebody else's head. Yeah. Um, because it's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That it's goes not, to the let not, those with ears hear. Yeah. And it's not saying forget about people. Like you should still love them and stuff. But this is when when you're trying to get someone to believe something. Like I'm, right. I'm, not, I'm against the force and belief. Right. Or ideas and i mean nowadays you see that more than ever with such a divided country and world with so many different ideas it's realistically all we can do now is promote what we do and let people make the decisions for themselves and see that's the right way that's the wrong way this idea of trying to try ever try to win an argument with someone who is calloused in the heart and brain it's, it doesn't matter. You, right. you, you can you can hit them every point. And so that whole idea is to save your energy, save your breath, not to get into arguments on Twitter, but to instead promote what you love and those people who do have ears and who are open to perceiving what you're saying, they'll hear it. Right. And that's what's important. Yeah. Um. You said a little while ago in a Christian meme review. Christian meme review. You talked about um, taking care of yourself because didn't we just mention something in the beginning of this? Yeah, sharpen the axe. Yeah, take care of yourself. And but you were talking because it was saying um, so in the Christian meme review, the meme was if your enemies go to hell, don't celebrate, but you should acknowledge you failed them. Yeah, it was two different memes. One was a person who was like, "What most Christians are going to do when a fellow person goes to hell," and they're like, "Victory." And then this person's like, what I'm going to do. And so I failed you. It was like a Star Wars meme. Right. Um, and that's important. Oh, I and think. Then, then I said, 
you should do neither. Like, right. you, you should, like it, it's not your job to um, save fellow humans. Like we're we're all on our own journey. Right. And you can promote things and you can lift each other up in love. That's all you can do. Right. But it's not I fail. Like, are you above them to fail them? Like, are you the teacher to the student? And then the same way with the victories, do you hate your brother? Right. Do you hate your sister? It's it, we're siblings, and and God is the parent, and, and all we can do is love, and then and hope, and and pray, 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 <laughs> um, for them to make the right choices and stuff. But this this idea, I, I feel like it's so holier than thou. It's so soapboxy to be like, I failed you, right? And it's like, imagine, ima- imagine you two kids in a sandbox, because that's how I see God sees us, you know, right? He loves us, but I mean, compared to the afterlife we're in the sandbox and one of one kid i don't know does something and then the other little boy is like i have failed you right it's like what you're both kids <clears throat> keep on playing right and then in the beginning of this podcast you you said oh well don't be selfish yeah but it's not selfish and that's what it's saying here um if you it, it's not for everybody or if it's not for everybody at, at, at all at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's hard to say it without saying, like, it's selfish. Yeah. But it's really not. Um, take care of yourself. Do what you're supposed to do. And then, you know, if... Just think. This is Isaiah. Imagine how old this is. Okay? Old. People don't want to listen, don't want to see the light, don't want to act in the way that god is requesting that they act yeah so in 2021 you're going to come up against it whether it's your child or your sibling or your grandmother yeah um it's not selfish to people take on a responsibility um especially with evangelism and yeah church um church members and and just feeling that they need to open the eyes, physically open yeah, the eyes yeah. or clear out the ears of other people. Yeah. And it's, God said, like, these are mysteries, you know, and I'm mm-hmm. revealing the answer to you, to you. Mm-hmm. you. You just, you hear it, you see it, and then you act upon it, and then you become an example in the world. But this kind of, this is what I heard, and you have to hear this yeah, too. Yeah, no, definitely not. I'm a huge advocate on leading by example. You know, if you're if you're in class, let's change it from siblings to in a classroom. You're never going to be the teacher. I mean, that the, we have the teacher, and that's Jesus. As Christians, we believe that. So, this there's always these things of like, it seems like these some of these people who are like they get stressed about it. It's like you're not the teacher, like, right? What you can do is is be a what are they called a model student, right? Be a model student. That model student is not turning around to the other kids and saying. You're supposed to be packed up at this time. Right. No. And, and that is the teacher's job. And, and you saw it with the casting of the stone. Jesus came to the students who had the other students surrounded who, you know, forgot to bring a pencil to class. Right. And he said, any person who hasn't forgotten something to class, get away. Right. Um, or no, any person who hasn't forgotten something from class before, you can then talk to her. And the kids are all kicking rocks like. Oh, I guess I got to go. Mm-hmm. And then as the teacher, he went up there and said, okay, go back to your seat and remember a pencil next time. Right. Go and sin no more. Right. And that, like, that's the way people should be thinking. They're thinking that they're the little, they're the teacher. You ever watch Recess? Yeah. There's a kid from, from the old old cartoon Recess who used to hang out with the, uh, the principal. Okay. And he had like the red curly hair and he'd always be like <laughs> ratting the kids out and all the other right. kids are like, who are you? You're like, why, why aren't you just out, out having fun with us? But. Uh, don't be that guy yeah don't be that guy um like i said people still fight over this at this very minute people are fighting over what isaiah 6 9 and 10 means what it meant then what it means now does it mean that jewish people are favored does it mean that you should like um, even Paul is brought into it, mm-hmm. um, you know, because Paul did get very mad when people wouldn't listen to yeah. him. So, but we, we here, here at Crook and Crow, at Crook and Crow, <laughs> we here have heard that be just be good people, 
Just be good people. And if we hear anything else, we'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> if anything else gets through our calloused ears, we will let you know. Right. But that has been Walk Through Thursday. Yeah. A little tr- tricky one today. It was tricky. And it was multifaceted. Multifaceted. But, you know, I am a lifelong um, religious. <laughs> and, and I was um, educated in religious schools and um, did my own self you know learning yeah and i really am not up to any kind of high comprehension about i know jesus fulfilled the scriptures but i didn't know what subscriptions yeah what, what exactly I, yeah, I felt the same way i was like yeah ah, he was prophesied and it's like but how is that yeah prophesied? so it was a little it was a little um step into that world yeah and this is one of the things that um he one fulfilled the, the scripture of one so of the things he fulfilled. So check it out. And, and it's how the two, you know, we always talk about Old Testament being a different book than the New Testament, yeah. but there is a tying point. There is a tie. There's a reason we still read it. There's a reason that it makes up majority of the Bible. So and we'll go through it one week at a time. But until then, that'll be next week when we start going over it again. Tomorrow is fill in the blank Friday. Check it out. It's going to be good. Tomorrow's birthday Friday, isn't it? birthday friday yeah oh yeah it's good it's, it's when we're celebrating my birthday because we're gonna miss my birthday it right. doesn't fall on one of our special days and i'm gonna be turning don't worry about it you um, don't care about age i don't care about age it's just a number until tomorrow it's been real it's been fun like subscribe and share and don't forget to pray today on national prayer day yeah peace